Hello everyone, my name is Lancelot August and welcome to a slightly different session to what I usually present. This is Grade 9 Creative Arts, the drama stream. Uh, my name is Lancelot August and the session is powered by the Amatkawe Collective, a non-profit organization that strives to create theater for change. We've aimed to create this revision series to help you as a high school learner doing either creative arts in grade 8 or 9 or dramatic arts in grade 10, 11 and 12 to help you get through the COVID-19 lockdown period. Um, today's session will specifically look at um, text analysis and the use of poetic devices. Uh, the whole tutorial is based on information uh, got uh, out of the that I got out of the study and master um, textbook for creative arts grade nine. So in today's session, we'll be looking specifically at phonation and resonance, as well as an explanation of poetic devices. And then we'll also do a poetry based activity on um, the road not taken. And the reason why we are starting here specifically is because your focus in creative arts, this term is on interpreting and presenting a poem, a form of dramatized prose or a monologue on your own. Uh, Dramatized prose is basically to act out prose in a dramatic way for an audience. And of course, prose is a form of writing that is similar to um, everyday uh, speech or story. And you'd know also that a monologue is a long speech by one actor in a play or movie uh, to express the character's thoughts aloud. So in the creative arts classroom, you would be doing this this term. Hopefully you will still get to do it if you get to go back to school. So um, uh, so basically um, it's important to look at uh, um, phonation and resonance uh, and also um, when you perform poetry because uh, you need to have a good voice projection, you need to have a modulation, you need to have a clear articulation of each word, you need to have good resonance. Uh, and this will obviously be strengthened through activities like, like warm-ups. So, without any further ado, let's get into the business of today. So, the first thing that we are looking at is the difference between phonation and resonance. Phonation is basically the, the making of sounds when your vocal cords come together and... Um, air flows in between those vocal cords and that is what causes them to vibrate. So basically, if you take your hand up to your throat while you are speaking, you can hear that vibration and that is basically the process of phonation that, that takes place. And in um, phonation as it relates to drama and music is um, the ability to create a high quality or to produce a high quality sound. So that is phonation. Resonance, on the other hand, is the process of making sounds louder or more powerful using the spaces between your lungs and your chest and your head and your mouth. And that is usually strengthened by warming up, like practicing humming sounds and things like that. In fact, I think that it's a good idea for us to sort of go through a bit of an activity. Um, so... I think this is a good time for you to just pause as you are watching this video to stand in a nice open space in your room, if your room is, has a nice open space, to stand in a nice space, to be in a neutral position and to start doing a basic warm-up routine as your drama teacher would have done with you in term one. And that involves things like, you know, circling your neck, you know, doing things with your shoulders, stretching your ribs from side to side, you know, getting the body nice and loose, and then also doing... Uh, breath work. <laughs> if I had the functionality to show you me doing all of these things, I would have done it. Um, and then the next step in this activity would for you to be to do some exercises in phonation and resonance. And that includes things like humming, you know, just doing the simple like hum. And then also singing, but singing with a yawn like ah. Oh. Oh, yawning is actually very effective because it allows you to basically go into um, it allows you to go into um a very a very low um singing 
register. Yawn, it's a wonderful tool to open up the back of your throat. It adds warmth and loudness to your voice. And the best use of the warm is to, to, to breathe deeply as if about to yawn and attempt to sing with that, with that same feeling. Um, the soft palate should be lifted when you yawn and the back of your throat should feel as if there's an egg stuck in it. And lower notes are easier to sing with an open throat. And so uh, start by singing a single pitch in a low register like ah and if you yawn you'll just go automatically lower the same with humming humming accentuates or accesses the natural brightness of the voice um and also um uh, if you if you mask your voice your voice doesn't quite have have the same effect so so it's 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 uh, so to hum, it's very important because it helps you to 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 reach high pitches naturally. Yeah. Another activity that 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 you could also do to improve um, resonance in your voice is to sing the E vowel. So you know, in, if you sing in music, you usually have an eight note scale um, that is characterized by tonic, so fa, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. But what you could do is to just um, sing uh the five note scale which should be do re mi fa so do re mi fa so um uh it helps to uh, it helps to 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 create this ringing sound of 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 uh if of efficient resonance so you sing the five note scale going up and then also going down so do re mi fa so so fa mi re do that's that's just an that's just um an example of 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 you know activities that that you can use to to build resonance okay so now we'll be moving on to some of the nitty gritties of of this performance of performance and we're looking specifically at poetic devices you'll see that there is a poem the poem is called uh, the road not taken by uh, Robert Frost. And they, before we can start analyzing the poem, there are some uh, poetic devices that you need to heed to. And the first thing that we will be looking at specifically, as you see it there, is stanza length. So stanza length, basically poems are usually written in lines which are grouped as stanzas or sometimes called verses. And the stanza length usually tells you about the structure and the form of a poem. You would remember this from English, of course, or Afrikaans, or whatever language you are doing. The next thing that you could look at in terms of analyzing a poem is the rhythm of the poem. So the rhythm refers to the beat of the words in the poem, which uh, influences its pace or speed and mood. If a poem has a slow, heavy rhythm, it usually indicates that the poem has a sad mood. And a faster rhythm usually indicates that there's a happier mood. So rhythms can also change within a poem. So it's not that a poem could sometimes have a fixed rhythm. Um, and the best way to identify the rhythm in the poem is to clap to the beat as you read the poem. The next thing that you should uh, look at is punctuation. Is there punctuation in the poem? Because punctuation can influence the rhythm. Usually, the more punctuation, the slower the poem will read. When there's punctuation at the end of the line, it's called an end-stopped line. And um, if there's no punctuation at the end of the line and the sentence sort of carries over onto the next line, it's called a run-on line or enjambment. And that usually occurs if the idea expressed uh, in one line runs into the next. So when you read the poem and you see an enjambment, don't pause at the end of the line, but continue reading on to the next line. Because this lessens that sort of sing-song effect that you have if you read the poem um, that you usually get when you read a poem. Then there are more poetic devices such as pauses, repetition, figurative language, and tone. I'll go into each of them. So in terms of pause, when you perform poetry, sometimes you need to work out when to put, you know, a silence or a gap or a pause, in other words, um, and which words or phrases to emphasize. This is because it makes uh, this makes meaning clearer and creates an interesting rhythm. Uh, sometimes there is punctuation within a line which makes you pause, slow down or stop and also slows the, uh, the pace of the poem. 
in terms of uh, repetition, uh, repetition just refers to if there are words or phrases or lines or stanzas that are repeated to sort of set the rhythm, to emphasize meaning or to create a specific mood. Rhyme refers to uh, when vowel sounds at the end of the word sound the same, like talk, walk, days, ways, teen, scene. And poetic phrasing is, is when there is heavy rhyming in the poem. So we'll look at all of these when we look at the actual poem that's on your screen at the moment. Um, and then also another poetic device is figurative language. So this is a language which appeals to our senses of sight and hearing and smell and taste, ex um, etc. For example, through imagery, uh, if a poem describes that um, uh, describes things that bring images or pictures to our minds, or the use of alliteration, which is the uh, the repetition of of first uh, consonant sounds in several words, for example, um, wide eye and wondering while we wait for the others to waken. Yeah, that's an example. So basically. To understand figurative language in a poem, just go through it slowly, line by line, asking why is it that the poet used this word or that phrase? What image is the poem trying to paint and why? Another um, figure, uh, not figure of speech, another poetic device is the tone. And tone refers to the overall mood of the poem. Um, that's how it sounds uh, to you, how it makes you feel, how you read it, what feeling, etc. Tone is also created with word choice, with the sounds of words and rhythm. So it's important that when you analyze the poem, that you are aware of the poetic devices that the poet has used, as it will help you to understand the, the meaning of the poem and also express it in your own words. So to have a look at the poem itself, the Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I marked the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So, <laughs> let this poem not fool you. This poem may seem about, you know, you as an individual having to take, you know, a sort of specific path, but the poem actually isn't about that. The poem is basically more about having chosen a path and then basically regretting it. So, you see, if, um, if you look at the structure of this poem, you see one, two, three, four different stanzas. Stanzas are made up of about five lines each. Um, you see uh, some words that rhyme. And you also see, yeah, you see some words that rhyme and you also uh, see some words being repeated. There's also some alliteration and things like that also happening in the in the poem. So um, where are the examples of alliteration? I saw some alliteration in the second stanza, the wanted way. Um, let me just bring up my utensils, as I call it, to be able to show you where, yeah, the, yeah, the wanted way, it's over there. Um, I also saw some repetition because it speaks about two roads diverged in a yellow wood in the first stanza, and then you can also see it with two roads diverged in a wood here. 
obviously I took the one less traveled by and it has made all the difference that sort of sets that um, that sort of is telling of the fact that the tone of this poem is sort of somber and it's also when it's confused people in terms of analyzing the poem so let's look at an activity uh, uh it's activity two if you are using this textbook so it says that you will work with the poem the road not taken by robert frost and it has some questions that it requires you to discuss so uh the first question is what does the title of the poem mean to you and what do you know about the poet so it's up to you to go and research the poem the poet rather and what type of um things influence the way that robert frost has written but basically the poem the, the road not taken it speaks about the irony of following your own path you uh, yeah it basically just speaks about the irony of following your own path and as i sort of asked you to please go and research the poet to sort of see what sort of things influence his work question b is asking is there a structure to the poem or is it in free verse explain through your analysis of the poem you've already seen that there is structure to the poem there are four stanzas consisting of five lines each how is rhyme used and what does this tell you about how to read the poem so let's just go back to the poem quickly how is rhyme used you see wood rhymes with stood and could whereas both rhymes with undergrowth so if you had to um just see if i can use a pen if you had sort of had to quantify this uh, in terms of coming up with a rhyme scheme uh, the first would be A, uh, and then the third line would also be B, or A, sorry, um, and also A there. Uh, the second and the third and the fourth line would all be A, A, A. That actually looks terrible. I'm so sorry for that. And then you'd see that uh, the second line rhymes with the fourth line. So I think I must just throw different shapes. So you can sort of see in the first stanza the rhyming scheme is a b a a b let's see if that continues throughout fair rhymes with where in the third line and there whereas claim rhymes with same so it's very much the same rhyming scheme let's see if it continues throughout the poem lay rhymes with day and way whereas black rhymes with back so that continues in the third stanza does it continue in the fourth stanza most possibly sigh rhymes with i and by hence rhymes with difference not entirely but hence rhymes with rinse so yeah it sort of does follow the same um poetic uh, it, it sort of does have a rhyme scheme so from this rhymes um from the way it rhymes you can determine that the rhyme scheme is um the first um the first line rhymes with the third and the fourth line in the stanza so you give all of that a I'm just trying to draw it here. I don't have like one of those screen things. And then the, th the second line of a stanza rhymes with the fifth line of a stanza. So that would be given B. And hence the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, A, B. Take it back to question uh, uh, C. How is rhyme used? It's A, B, A, A, B. And what does it tell you about how to read the poem? It sort of gives you, because the poem is written in a sort of natural, not natural, yeah, in a naturalistic way. It's this, 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 this prose, it refers to this process of natural thoughts, natural ideas that occur spontaneously. And that is sort of uh, how you need to read the poem. Question 1D is asking if there are any run on lines or enjambments and what does this tell you about how to read the poem so let's go back to the poem are there any run on lines let me choose 
a different color this time. I think I will choose a orange. Uh, you can already see that uh, line two and three and four are run on lines. Um, and then there is none in line six, seven, eight, nine, and ten in that stanza. There's nothing. Um, there is, however, at the end of stanza uh, three, um, yet knowing how yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubted if i should ever come back that is also enjambment and there is none uh uh in the final stanza so yes there is enjambment but what does this mean for the poem it, 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 it means that yes there is enjambment and it basically just means that um you read it without a pause yeah and then the last question is, um, is there any repetition of words or phrases uh, and lines, stanzas? Yes, we've already determined that there is in the, I need to choose a different color now. And I'm going to choose a nice green. Yes, there is. The first line of the poem says two lines diverged in the yellow wood. And then the, I think it's line 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, in 18, it says the same thing, two roads diverge in a hood. So there is a repetition there as well. So that brings us to the uh, end of the day session. Uh, so just to recap on what you learned, you learned that uh, what the difference between phonation and resonance is, and you've also done some warm-ups, and then also you've learned how to analyze the poem by looking at various poetic devices. Uh, that brings us now really to the end of today's session. Uh, this was a session of grade 9 creative arts in the drama stream brought to you by myself, Lance Lai August, powered by the Amakawe Collective, a non-profit organization that strives to, co uh, to create theater for change. Goodbye.